Hi, I'm Tony Page from Travel Signposts, and today I'd like us to talk about the dreaded curse of the blurry photographs. Hey, we've all done it. We've just taken that marvellous photograph just right. Maybe it even looked good on the back of our uh, camera on the LCD. Then we go home, blow it up on the computer, boom, blurred. It's really disappointing, isn't it? But, you know, you can get round this in a lot of ways. Why is it blurred? Well, of course, it can be out of focus. But let's leave that aside for the moment. We can deal with that later. Maybe it's because you use too slow a shutter speed. Maybe the subject's been moving too quickly. Maybe you've used uh, too big a magnification on the uh, telephoto lens. There's a common factor in all this, and that is movement. And today we're going to talk about camera movement. And you know, sometimes the simplest uh, solutions can be the best. So let's look at the most basic thing, how you're holding your camera. Because if you're not holding your camera steady, your shots are not going to be sharp. A small movement at the camera can mean a big movement at your subject that you're actually taking, and that can easily lead to blur. Okay. There's two main kinds of cameras we're all using, right? The DSLR, the single lens reflex, and of course the point and shoot. Well, let's split this into two, and first let's talk about the DSLR, because it's easier. Most pros like a heavy DSLR, and there's a reason for that, because frankly, it's a lot easier to hold a heavy camera steady than it is to hold a light one. That's why point and shoots, for example, are so difficult to hold steady. Okay, let's look at the DSLR. Most of them nowadays have a grip on the right-hand side. So there's a tendency just to hold it in one hand. And of course, the shutter button is also operated by the same hand. And there's a problem there because, in fact, it's more liable to lead to uh, shake if you're just doing it with one hand without the proper support. So the way I do it is you must hold the camera, you take the weight of your camera in your left hand. Go on, and weigh it in your hand. And then you move your right hand in and use that to uh, operate the shutter button. And you know, by taking most of the weight in your left hand, you can actually operate the shutter button more smoothly. Squeeze it. You'll also be able to use nowadays the zoom, but you could also focus with the, with the fingers of your left hand as well. So you try it. I know it's easier. I do it myself. You hold the camera when you're wandering around. You hold it in the right hand with that grip. But when you're actually shooting, try and transfer the weight to your left hand. Honestly, you'll find it does work better and you'll get steadier shots. Right, so now we've got a good firm grip on the camera. Stage two is to look through the viewfinder, and this gives us another chance to further stabilize our camera because we can press it against our forehead. Now, I'm not saying use some kind of death grip and ram it against your forehead with power. Just hold it firmly against your, against your forehead. And while you're at it, no flying with the elbows. Get them into the side of your body and you can stabilize them against your body. And think about it. Basically what you're doing is making a tripod out of your two elbows and your forehead. You're actually holding the camera more firmly that way. Now, of course, if you're not standing firmly with your two feet, the whole thing's a waste of time. Because if you're wavering around on the uh, sort of uh, on one foot or one foot slightly up on a rock and you can't stand straight, it's a waste of space because you basically, uh, you're going to be wavering around anyway, no matter how firmly you hold the camera at the other end of your body. Okay, so now you've, you've got your feet firmly planted, you've got your, you're holding the camera firmly against your forehead, and you've got your elbows into your sides. Now, breathing. Fine. A lot of people have different opinions about this. I'll tell you what I do. When I'm taking the shot, I breathe out. I take the photograph, and then I breathe in. I find that if you've had a good breath, and then you're breathing out, you tend to be more relaxed. Where if you're holding your breath, you tend to have a little bit of tension there. But your mileage may vary.
Okay, that's about it for holding the DSLR. Next time, the point and shoot, or to be more polite, the compact camera. Until then, this is Tony Page from Travel Signposts wishing you good shooting.